Nakajima, a young boy, endures frequent bullying from his classmates, since they perceive him as a talentless lad. Among his tormentors, Momo stands out as one of the main culprits who persistently singles him out for amusement. One day, their teacher enters the classroom with two new students, the enigmatic Kiwaya and the cheerful Nana. When questioned about their abilities, Kiwaya remains silent, while Nana openly admits that she can read minds. This revelation shocks and concerns the other students as having their thoughts exposed to someone else can make anyone uncomfortable. Nana is assigned to sit next to Nakajima, and using her mind-reading power, she quickly realizes the extent of the bullying he endures. Her suspicions are confirmed when Mogo insults Nakajima, calling him unfit to fight against the enemies of humanity due to his lack of talent. However, to everyone's surprise, Nana chooses to defend Nakajima and confronts Mogo, revealing that he bullies Nakajima only to impress her and ask her out on a date. Nana firmly rejects Mogo's, embarrassing him in front of their classmates. Later, the class is asked to elect a class president, Mogo immediately volunteers, considering himself the strongest. Another student named Seiya, who can control ice, also steps forward. Surprisingly, Nana suggests that Nakajima should be considered as well, much to the dismay of Mogo and Seiya. To settle the matter, Hyoi proposes a duel between the three candidates. Nakajima is not enthusiastic about the duel and doesn't understand why Nana sees him as a potential class president. However, he obliges when Nana asks him to show her around the island after school. During their conversation, Nana explains the downside of her mind-reading ability, causing her discomfort in public places and the consequent lack of friends. Nakajima eventually reveals that he has been hiding his own talent, as he didn't want their enemies to know about it. After eating together, Nana asks Nakajima to take her to a place where she can see the sea, so Nakajima takes her to a cliff. While talking, a sudden strong wind pushes Nana over the edge. Nakajima manages to grab her hand and save her. They wonder about the strange wind, unaware that Kiwaya in the teacher's room is going through students' information. The next day, a duel takes place between Mogo and Seiya as Nakajima chooses to withdraw from the race. However, when Mogo loses to Seiya, he releases a dangerous fireball in anger, putting everyone at risk. Nakajima is forced to use his talent to neutralize the fireball and protect his classmates. This heroic act leads to Nakajima being chosen as the class president. Nakajima realizes that Nana played a crucial role in his election and invites her to the cliff to express his gratitude. Curious about the extent of Nakajima's power, Nana asks him to hold her hand. She then throws him off the cliff, causing Nakajima to hang on for his life. In that moment, Nana reveals that she was never able to read minds, it was all a pretense. In truth, she's a keen observer and is able to logically deduce people's emotions and thoughts through even the smallest of details. She explains that her mission is to eliminate talented individuals like Nakajima, who has the potential to become leaders of the enemy of humanity. Shocked by Nana's revelation, Nakajima loses his grip and falls into the sea. Nana then receives a text message confirming that she has successfully eliminated Nakajima, who was considered a future threat to humanity. A long time ago, it was revealed that the true enemies of humanity were not monsters but humans with special powers known as talented individuals. Over time, more and more children with these powers were born, causing chaos and destruction. Normal humans were unable to handle this threat, leading the government to create a special police force composed of superpowered individuals. However, this police force turned against the government, considering themselves superior to ordinary humans. This resulted in a prolonged war, which the talentless humans eventually won. After the war, humanity gradually recovered, but to prevent a recurrence of history, the government decided to send the talented individuals to a deserted island, disguising it as a special school. At the same time, they sent agents tasked with secretly killing the talented. In the present, the students are practicing their water fighting skills on a lake. Among them is Seiya, who displays his dangerous freezing abilities. Nana feels that Seiya's powers are too dangerous and decides to investigate further. Meanwhile, Mogo gets into an argument, but the fight is quickly stopped by Shibusawa, who has the ability to time travel. Nana sees an opportunity to gather information about Shibusawa's powers, so she takes him out for lunch and accidentally confirms his time-traveling ability by spilling water on him. Nana panicked upon realizing the implications of his power. However, their conversation is interrupted by Kyoya, who asks Shibusawa to use his ability to find Nakajima. Nana didn't want Shibusawa to discover the truth, so she tries to divert the conversation by claiming that Nakajima is sick. But Kyoya suspects something is wrong since Nakajima has not returned to his room and Nana is the last person who saw him. To avoid suspicion, Nana pretended to read Kyoya's mind and accuse him of being an imposter, successfully distracting Shibusawa. To further cover her tracks, Nana spread a rumor that Nakajima had been attacked by a monster. She pretended to be frightened, convincing Shibusawa and further piquing Kyoya's interest. Shikusawa decides to use his time-traveling ability to investigate Nakajima's disappearance. 
Upon his return, Shibuso informs Nana that Nakajimo was with her on the cliff, but ran out of energy before witnessing anything further. Mana is relieved that he didn't see her push Nakajima off the cliff. However, she realizes the need to eliminate Shibusawa to protect herself. So she meets him in his room at night and claims she knew what happened to Nakajima. Nana leads him to a location where she said Nakajima was attacked, but it was actually a frozen lake created by Seiya. Unaware of the danger, Shibusawa used his time-traveling ability and found himself submerged in the frozen lake. Even if he returned to the present, he would freeze to death. Thus, Nana successfully orchestrated the deaths of both Shibusawa and Nakajima. Kyoya ventured to the cliff to investigate Nakajima's sudden vanishing, but could only find a broken rope and Nakajima's watch. Meanwhile, nobody suspects Nana's involvement in the students' disappearances. Instead, Mogo and Seiya suspect Kyoya, who happened to be absent from class. Just as they discuss Kyoya, he arrives drenched and with a leaf stuck to his head, which makes Nana perceive him as a potential threat. Curious about Kyoya, Nana follows him during lunchtime and discovers that he goes to the dormitory shed to feed a cat. Later, they cross paths in the hallway, and Nana can't tolerate the leaf on Kyoya's head any longer. She mentions it to him, and he is touched by her kindness. Unexpectedly, Kyoya asks Nana to be his friend and invites her to his room. There, Kyoya reveals his true purpose for coming to the island, investigating his sister's disappearance five years ago. He further discloses that he found Nakajima's watch during his investigation. Nana becomes even more convinced that Kyoya must be eliminated, and she believes she has found a way. While in Kyoya's room, Nana discovers that he has no sense of smell. The following day, Nana executes her plan to kill Kyoya by filling the dormitory shed with gas, intending for him to ignite it while using the stove to warm the cat's milk. Her plan goes smoothly as the stove explodes when Kyoya lights it, engulfing the shed in flames. Nana resumes her role as a concerned student, pretending to be worried about Kyoya, but is shocked to see him alive unaware that his talent is immortality, rendering him unable to die regardless of her attempts. Kyoe becomes suspicious of Mana because of her shock reaction upon seeing him alive. He wonders why she didn't sense his immortality if she possesses the ability to read minds. However, Kyoe lacks concrete evidence that Nana is the one who tried to kill him or responsible for Nakajima and Shibusawa disappearances. The following day, Kyoe discusses yesterday's explosion with the students. However, instead of directly accusing Mana as the culprit, he vaguely mentioned that it was the work of the enemy who had tried to kill him. The students are skeptical, because they believe the enemy wasn't present on the island. Meanwhile, the girls in the class become excited when Michiru receives a love letter from an anonymous person, asking her to meet after school. Michiru, who has a talent for healing wounds, is overjoyed by the love letter, but immediately heals Nana's injured leg when she notices it. Michiru's healing method involved licking the wounds, but it came at the cost of reducing her own lifespan. Sadly, the sender of the love letter never showed up, and instead, Nana appeared revealing that it was all a prank orchestrated by their classmates. Michiru is devastated by the betrayal, but appreciates Nana's honesty. Later that night, Nana contemplates how to kill Michiru, knowing that injuring her would be futile due to her healing abilities. The only viable option seems to be stabbing her in the back to prevent her from healing the wound. However, when Nana leaves her room to go to Michiru, she is surprised to find Kyoe standing guard outside. Nana questions him, but he explains that he is concerned about her safety and wants to protect her. Nana tries to deceive him by turning the music on and slipping out through the window, but Kyoya sees through her plan and follows her. Upon entering Michiru's room, Kyoya finds Nana with a severe stab wound while Michiru attempts to heal her by licking it. Nana quickly lies, claiming that she has heard suspicious voices and rushes to save Michiru from an invisible enemy that vanishes afterward. Although Kyoya remains suspicious, he lacks solid evidence to confront Nana. While Nana tears and rumors about an enemy infiltrating the island made the other students sympathize with her. Taking advantage of the situation, Nana continued to act convincingly, pretending to cry in front of the students and spreading rumors about the enemy's presence and Nakajima's death. The students believe her and even appoint Nana as the class president due to her bravery in saving Michiru. With the support of the students, Nana immediately exercised her authority by instructing Michiru to gather information about everyone's talents in the class. Despite pretending not to suspect Nana anymore, Kyoe continues to question her and observe her behavior. He mentions that Nana's back wound resembles a stab from a knife or ice pick, which contradicted her claim of being attacked by a monster. Although Nana resented his skepticism, she acknowledges Kyoe's sharp intuition and deduction. To make the next murder appear more like magic, she decides to create a new weapon, poison needles. Later that night, Sunakichi, a student who claims to see the future, approached Nana and shows her photos of his visions. One particular photo depicted Nana attempting to harm Sunakichi during an upcoming event. 
Nana feigned ignorance and denied any intention to harm him, so Tsumekichi tries to prove his ability by taking her to the cafeteria and explaining his ability. Tsunikichi also blackmails Nana to become her girlfriend by showing the proof that she killed Nakajima. Nana, having no other choice, decides to obey him. He takes her to his room and instructs her to massage his back. Although Nana contemplates killing him during the massage, she decides to wait to avoid detection from other students nearby. While waiting, she discovers a suspicious way Tsunikichi is holding his camera while asleep. Nana investigates the camera and realizes it can capture future photos. She saves one surprising future photo before taking Tsunikichi's camera outside the dormitory, hoping to use it herself. However, she learns that only Tsunikichi can use the camera to take future photos, but Nana tries and only produces ordinary pictures. She understands that Tsunikichi sees the future through his dreams and captures it with the camera. The next day, Tsunikichi realizes that Nana took his camera during the night as he only has four future photos instead of the usual five, indicating Nana secretly took one. Suspicious, Tsunikichi searches Nana and finds a hidden photo in her clothes pocket. The photo depicts Nana dead, bound by ropes. Tsunikichi believes this means Nana will die instead of him tonight. To prove his theory, he asks Nana to meet him in the shed at 10 p.m. However, Nana plans to kill him instead. When Tsunikichi approaches the shed, Nana accidentally drops the poison needle box she prepared. As a result, she resorts to strangling Tsunikichi's neck with a rope, similar to the scene in the initial photo. Unexpectedly, Tsunikichi is prepared and manages to free himself. Nana seizes the opportunity and stabs Tsunikichi's arm with the poison needle, causing him to collapse. In his final moments, Tsunikichi is confused about why he ended up dead, while Nana is alive. Nana then reveals how she lured Tsunikichi into a trap with a selfie she took on his camera, tricking him into believing it was one of his dream photos. She then shows him the real one before he dies. Shortly afterward, Kyoya and Michiru arrive at the shed, searching for Tsunikichi. They had heard about Nana and Tsunikichi's relationship and the fake photo Kyoya found earlier. Nana had anticipated their suspicions and concocted a story, claiming that Tsunikichi was attacked by an enemy. While Kyoya is skeptical, Nana provides an additional explanation, revealing that Tsunikichi had taken nude photos of her and blackmailed her into being his girlfriend. This revelation convinces Kyoya. Consequently, Nana is allowed to leave. Nevertheless, Nana makes the daring choice to retrieve the remaining photographs of the future from Tsunikichi's room. Much to her astonishment, she realizes that one significant photo of her pushing Nakajima off a cliff is missing. Tsunikichi had cunningly concealed it beneath his uniform, and now Michiru stumbles upon it in the shed, completely oblivious to the gravity of the situation. Nana plots to kill Michiru, but decides to do it later. Michiru asks her about the photo while giving it to her. Playing ignorant about the contents of the photo, Nana details that Tsunikichi's talent wasn't always accurate. The day after Tsunikichi's funeral, Kyoya suggests performing an autopsy on the deceased. However, before he could open the coffin, Tsunikichi suddenly rises from the dead. It was revealed that Shinji, a student with the ability to control corpses, is behind this. Yuka, a girl present at the funeral, rebukes Shinji for his actions. Shinji states that he wants to discover the true cause of Tsunikichi's death. Instead of conducting an autopsy, Kyoya suggests questioning Tsunikichi directly. Nana, fearing exposure of her own actions, tries to intervene and claims to hear the screams of Tsunikichi's soul, pleading for him to be allowed to rest in peace. The students believe Nana and ask Shinji to cease his necromantic activities. Shinji complied, allowing Tsunikichi to return to the coffin. The next day, Nana visits Yuka in an attempt to gather information about Shinji. However, she couldn't learn much, except that Shinji rarely attends classes and spends most of his time in his room. Suspicious of Yuka and Shinji's relationship, Nana decides to follow Yuka to uncover the truth. One night, she discovers Yuka secretly meeting with Shinji, and it becomes apparent that they are dating. Nana sees this as an opportunity to eliminate both of them. Unfortunately, Kyoe catches Nana observing Yuka and Shinji. The following day, when the students are about to have physical education class, Nana pretends to be ill and asks Michiru to accompany her to the infirmary. However, as soon as Michiru leaves, Nana leaves her bed and goes to the boys' dormitory, where she kills Shinji using a poison needle. On her way back to the infirmary, Nana stumbles upon a trapped cat, which makes her late in returning. When Kyoya and Michiru visit Nana, they couldn't find her in the infirmary. At this point, Nana didn't seem to care if Kyoya suspected her. All she wants is to save the cat. She asks Kyoya and Yuka for help, with Yuka claiming to have super strength. However, Yuka refused, citing her allergy to cats. Eventually, they manage to rescue the cat. Later that night, Nana enters Yuka's room with the intent to kill her. However, someone attacks Nana from behind, revealing himself to be Shinji, who should have died earlier that day. 
It is then revealed that Yuka is the true necromancer, while Shinji possesses super strength. Shinji had died before arriving on the island and Yuka resurrected him as an undead, driven by her love for him. Yuka disclosed the circumstances of Shinji's death to Nana. Surprisingly, Nana admitted to killing Nakajima and the others when Yuka threatened to expose her. However, Nana argued that she was not as heartless as Yuka, as she allowed her victims to rest in peace. To win Yuka's trust, Nana made an enticing offer, the ability to uncover Shinji's thoughts even in death. Convinced of Nana's mind-reading prowess, Yuka have Shinji free Nana, but to her surprise, Nana deceitfully escapes. Yuka chased Nana towards the mountains, raising resurrected corpses to capture her. The sheer numbers of the undead made Nana question their origins, speculating on the fate of the talented individuals who came before her. Despite their relentless pursuit, Nana managed to elude the zombies. Alone and contemplating, she realized that Yuka controlled the zombies using the items hidden beneath her bed. Aware of the ongoing danger, Nana resolved to keep running. Nana stumbled upon an abandoned hut, sparking an escape plan from Yuka and the zombies. She tampered with the door, intending to wait inside until sunrise. Yuka eventually finds Nana in the hut but opted not to stay, fearing risks. Instead, she returns home with Shinji, locking the door from the outside to prevent Nana's escape. Yuka planned to return with her zombie army later under the cover of darkness. However, her anger mounted when Nana managed to evade capture upon Yuka's nocturnal return. Despite an extensive search, Nana remained elusive even after sunrise. Defeated, Yuka begrudgingly retreated to the dormitory without achieving her desired outcome. As Yuka passed through the dormitory gates with Shinji on her back, Nana suddenly reappeared, pouncing on Yuka and searching for an item of control. She swiftly found Shinji's school paper, revealing Yuka's reliance on objects touched by the deceased. Holding the paper, Nana threatened Yuka, demanding they go to the cliff. There, Nana disclosed her escape from the locked hut by removing the screws from the hinges before Yuka's arrival. As Yuka grasped Nana's explanation, she realized she had been outsmarted. She apologizes and vowed not to expose Nana's crimes, returning her poison needles. However, Nana had decided to kill Yuka. She tosses Shinji's paper into the abyss and coerces Yuka into revealing the truth about his death. After disposing of Yuka's body, Nana encounters Kira who possesses the unique ability to produce poisonous saliva by regularly consuming snakes. Nana knows that Kirara is usually seen with her best friend Kaori, but when she finds Kirara alone without Kaori, she asks about her friend. It turns out that Kirara and Kaori's relationship is strained due to an argument. To convince Nana, Kirara shows her their chat conversation where Kaori cursed her. Instead of sympathizing, Nana sees this as an opportunity to kill Kirara. She stabs Kirara with the poison meal, taking her belongings and cell phone. Nana then disposes of Kiro's body near the previously controlled undead corpses of Yuka. She then heads to Kaori's room and laces her contacts with poison to make it seem like Kirara did it because of their dispute over Kaori's contacts. Afterwards, Nana meets Kyoya and discloses Yuka's death and leads him, Michiru, Seiya, and Mogo to a cliff, where she reveals Yuka's secrets. However, Nana lies about the cause of Yuka's death, claiming she jumped off the cliff after being confronted about her wrongdoings, which led to Shinji's demise and the control of his body. Nana requests Mogo to burn all the corpses, including Shinji and Kirara. Kyoe grows suspicious of Nana's crimes, pointing out her lack of an alibi during the murders, and exposes her in front of their friends. Their conversation is interrupted by a scream from the girl's dormitory, where Kaori is found dead in her room. Nana pretends to be surprised by Kaori's corpse, but brief smile reveals her satisfaction with her method of killing. This time, she is an alibi as she was with Kyoe and the others when Kaori died. Hyoya notices the position of Kaori's hand, suggesting she may have attempted to remove her own eyes. He investigates her death and discovers poison in her contact lens case. This leads him and the others to suspect Kirara, known for producing poison and being absent from school since noon. Hyoya searches Kirara's room, finding information about her search for snakes in the mountains. Realizing that pursuing her there would be futile, Hyoya decides to reinvestigate Kaori's room. During the investigation, Hyoya checks Kaori's cell phone and discovers a text message from Kirara sent at 3 p.m. while they were on the cliff. This message convinces Hyoya that Nana is the killer. He contacts some of his classmates to share his theory. According to Hyoya's deduction, Nana killed Kirara in the morning while she was searching for snakes in the mountains. As a result, Kirara's body won't be found since it was burned along with the zombie corpses of Yuka. While they were at the cliff, Nana secretly sent a message to Kaori's phone using Kira's cell phone, which she acquired after killing her. This was done to divert Kyoe's suspicion away from herself. Consequently, Kira's phone is now in Nana's possession. Convinced of his analysis, Kyoe searches Nana, hoping to find Kira's phone on her. Unfortunately, Kyoe is unable to find a phone because Nana had cleverly hidden it on a zombie corpse. 
The corpse would dissolve in sunlight, and as it decomposed, its finger would press the send button, triggering a message prepared by Nana on Kira's cell phone, which would be sent to Kaori. The other students, without being prompted, immediately defend Nana when Kyoya accuses her without evidence. Michiru goes as far as demanding an apology from Kyoya, who reluctantly complies. Later at night, Nana sits alone outside the dormitory, contemplating disposing of the poison she used to kill Kaori. Suddenly, Michiru appears, catching Nana off guard. Nana suspects that Michiru might be an enemy and prepares to defend herself. However, Michiru surprises Nana by suggesting that she takes a break while Michiru stands guard. Nana agrees, closing her eyes, but just as she does, Michiru points a knife at her throat, claiming she knew Nana is the killer all along. Despite Michiru's attempt, Nana manages to disarm her, injuring Michiru's hand in the process. Two other students emerge from the dormitory and instruct Michiru to return, unaware of Nana's involvement. The next day, Nana takes Michiru to a cliff to confront her about the previous night's events. Upon noticing the wound on Michiru's hand, Nana realizes that the Michiru standing before her is an imposter. If she were the real Michiru, the wound would have healed by now. Nana deduces that the person in front of her possesses the ability to transform and soon after, the figure reveals himself as Jin, a former student. Jin leads Nana to a hidden cave, where he confesses he knows all of her murders. He had been disguised as a cat that Kyoya had taken care of, observing everything. Jin discloses that five years ago, the island's talented individuals engaged in a civil war to determine the strongest, and he was the sole survivor due to his unique abilities. He seeks Nana's cooperation in investigating the central government's involvement in instigating the civil war. Jin then threatens to kill her if she refuses to cooperate. However, Nana poisons Jin's coffee, causing him intense pain. To her surprise, Jin not only copy appearances, but also their talents as well. From this revelation, Nana believes that she found the true enemy of humanity. Nana decides to escape, but Jin refuses to let her leave so easily. He transformed once again, taking on the form of Mogo, and attacked her using his fire powers. Surprisingly, after inflicting considerable harm, Jin brought Nana to Michiru's room, where she could receive care. When Nana regained consciousness, Michiru was overjoyed, explaining that she had discovered Nana lying in front of her room the previous night. Since then, Michiru had been consumed with worry, fearing that Nana had been targeted by enemies of humanity. Witnessing Michiru's innocence, Nana confesses that she harbored no fear of those enemies. In fact, she despises them because they were responsible for the death of her parents. However, Nana blames herself for their demise as it is her own negligence that allowed intruders to easily enter her home through an unlocked window when she was little. This tragic event haunted her, and she still carries the burden of responsibility for their deaths. After Nana finished sharing her painful past, Kyoya appears and requests that both Nana and Michiru accompany him to a fellow student's room, which is already filled with other students. Upon their arrival, they discovered the dead body of Ryuji, brutally murdered. Unlike the previous killings, this time Nana is not the suspected culprit. Taking on the role of a detective, Kyoe interrogated Mogo, whose room was located next to Ryuji's. Mogo had been in his room all night busy lecturing his three henchmen, and they all heard nothing from Ryuji's room. Kyoe then interrogated Mogo's three henchmen and asked them to show him their talents. The first person interrogated turned out to only have a talent for changing his voice, the second person can make an astral projection, while the third person is a magnetic man. Fuko, Ryuji's girlfriend, who discovered his lifeless body, seems suspicious, particularly when Kyoe discovered her ability to control the elements. Kyoe requested Fuko to demonstrate her talent, to which she summons a gust of wind, which coincidentally coincided with Ryuji's death in his room, where the window was wide open, allowing the wind to freely enter. Just as Kyoe was about to proceed with the investigation, their teacher interrupts them to inform them that the school authorities are on the phone. It turned out that Kyoe had reported the murders at school to them. This forced Nana and Michiru to continue the investigation without Kyoe's assistance. They managed to find evidence suggesting that Ryuji had opened his bedroom window not to invite the wind in, but rather because he realized he was in danger and attempted to escape. While Nana is alone in her room, her teacher knocks on her door to deliver her new uniform. Suddenly, Nana remembers her missing poison bottle, which she had kept in the pocket of her old uniform. It was highly likely that Michiru had taken it while taking care of her. Before Nana could search Michiru's room for the poison, Kyoe returns and invited her to interrogate Fuko. During the interrogation, Fuko failed to provide any new information and instead broke down in tears, imploring Nana to help her avenge Ryuji's death. After the interrogation, Nana finally had the opportunity to search Michiru's room. To her surprise, she stumbled upon Michiru's diary instead of the poison bottle. In the diary, Michiru chronicled their experiences since they first met in class, expressing her deep trust and friendship towards Nana. Michiru couldn't bear to see Nana in pain, especially when Nana shared the tragic news of her parents' death. 
Just as Nana was absorbed in the diary, Jin suddenly appeared behind her, holding the missing poison bottle. While returning the bottle to Nana, he promised to uncover the truth behind Mana being labeled a murderer. However, he subtly reprimanded Mana for suspecting Michiru, emphasizing that Michiru was an innocent girl who had always treated Nana kindly. Jin found it outrageous that Nana would doubt her. Before leaving, Jin asked Nana to check Michiru's bathroom as he grew concerned about her prolonged absence. To Mama's alarm, she discovered Michiru unconscious in the bathtub. Nana chose to prioritize Michiru's safety and dedicated two days to caring for her. Finally, Michiru regained consciousness, revealing that she had fainted while using her powers to help a cat. Jin approached Michiru with an injured cat, seeking her assistance. Michiru successfully saved the cat, but the excessive use of her powers caused her to faint while bathing. During this time, Jin stumbled upon a dead rabbit with a similar neck wound as the rescued cat. Realizing that the person responsible for harming the rabbit was still present, Jin confronted them. He made it known that he was aware of their role in Ryuji's death. Although he didn't express concern about the killer's next target, Jin demanded that they cease harming and killing innocent animals. The scene then shifts to the central government office, where the committee orders Nana's mentor to go to the island. However, his mission is not to save the talented individuals, but to expedite the process of eliminating them. Back on the island, Michiru appears to be recovering gradually, prompting Nana to remember that she had wasted a lot of time caring for Michiru. She realizes that she must return to her work of killing the students, and she has already selected her next target, Fuko. If her superiors were to find out that she had taken care of Michiru instead of killing her, they would surely execute her. While she values Michiru's life over her own, Nana wants to understand why Michiru has shown her such kindness and has healed her wounds multiple times. Michiru reveals that she had a friend who died of cancer and ever since then, she has regretted her inability to heal her best friend. Michiru's powers can only heal external wounds, not fatal illnesses like cancer. That's why she has been trying to heal Nana, to prevent losing any more friends. Michiru's story deeply touches Nana, leading her to hesitate in carrying out the task of killing Michiru. Michiru visits Nana in her room to discuss her concerns about the death of Nana's parents, telling that Nana could not have been responsible in any way. Afterwards, they become best friends, exchange gifts, and enjoy their time together. However, Jin informs Nana that Michiru might be in danger, as he spotted her heading towards the beach. Worried, Nana rushes to find Michiru but receives a call from her mentor, who demands that she kill all the students on the island. Meanwhile, Michiru encounters the killer, but is saved by Nana just in time. Nana is injured in the process but insults Michiru in order to make Michiru leave her. Michiru runs away and the assassin, Rentaru, attempts to finish off Nana. However, Kyoya strangles Rentaro's real body, saving Nana. Unfortunately, Nana is gravely wounded and is close to dying. But she finds solace in the fact that she has finally found a true friend. To her surprise, Michiru returns and heals Nana's injuries, but sacrifices her own life in the process. Afterwards, a distraught Nana holds Michiru's body, crying in pain as she has lost her one and only true friend. Ending the series with a big f*** you. Go read the manga. The end.